welcome to podcast number 30. <laughs> <laughs> Our guests this week are Rob Hills and Vicky Hills, husband and wife, dream athletic team. Um, <laughs> don't cringe. I mean, like, you can speak if you want. You can well, come in with that. Yeah. You, did you say Rob first? Maybe you should have said Vicky Hills. Do you want me to do the hill? Uh, yeah. Do it again. You know. Vicky Hills and the Lob Hills. Thank you. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, sorry. So, um, Lob's obviously. Hold on, the dog's licking my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Your Lob's a dog. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Lob's uh, Olympic Games silver medalist, US sport commentator, and now we're kind of jewelry maker slash carbon fiber the paler. I guess is that is that an appropriate introduction? Uh, so yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, but yeah. Who, who knows what? It's just every day is a different day. <laughs> every day is a Saturday. Yeah, it's like Mr. Ben. You again won't remember yeah. that, but like a little man who whatever I put on went yeah. into a cupboard, came back with a different hat. And a different <laughs> yeah, job. whatever I put on in the morning, that's that's the job I do basically. Oh, fair enough. There you go. Nice. Phil, there's a few ideas for you in the diamond. Yeah. <laughs> bit, my, bit my set of workshop and yeah. do some carbon repair. Uh, no, yeah, and Vicky, Olympic swimmer as well, and swam the channel, which channel I think which she swam that for person. fun, believe it or not. Really? Well, wow. that's one of my questions, Lisa. On why do people do really hard things for fun to get out the house? Do you I think, think that was have a, a challenge? Get something. Have something no, to I just do. I, you know when you see people doing like multiple Ironmans and ultra events. Well, you're doing can't... a marathon, aren't you? No, I'm not doing a marathon. I don't yes, want to. Join me and Rob in, <laughs> in April 2020 at the London Marathon, where you will have a little trot round. With Possibly us. doing a marathon. You don't have to do a time. We just got to survive. <laughs> That's the plan. It'll all be fine. It'll all be fine. And you're also a uh, masseuse. Still a masseuse at British Cycling. <laughs> Or have I used the incorrect why term you, again? Why are you screwing your face up? Yes, so I much am doing your face up, like this massage therapist. Yes. Well, masseuse is close enough. Isn't it? <laughs> it has different connotations, doesn't it? Masseuse, does it? <laughs> I've never heard it's anyone say thing. a masseuse. <laughs> have you not? Not in a long time. No. <laughs> if you're getting your legs done, you go and say I'm getting a massage. I think you pay for a masseuse, whereas you lot just go in for free. <laughs> 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 that's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you're picky, pretty picky about your massages, and your you know, Vicky's actually allowed to work on you. Usually, it's just just Hannah. Yeah, I, uh, Hannah hasn't given me a massage in a long time, to be honest. She not? No, it's like normally Ben and Vicky now. Oh, the best. How did you win them over? Just chat, really. Just chat. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with the technical. He's skill. so picky. Like you're you talking about bitching. This is some guy who's like, if Are you, you get. Pick- yeah, no, genuinely, if he gets a masseuse in and he's not happy. To be happy. fair, it's one of those things, you know, like some people go to the hairdressers, they have a haircut, they like that haircut, the happy days go back. Some people go and don't like it. There'll be nothing, to, there'll be literally no difference, mm. but it feels different. And that's and that's what athletes yeah. are like. So all of our team at British Cycling is really good. All of them are. They're no. super good, but one person fits for one and one person fits for another. It's fine, isn't it? It's a bit like now, a, I didn't like the mud bike saddle. It is just like yeah. a bike. I mean, you know, that's what, a bit what's weird. the best bike saddle? Well, it's the one that fits you, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's a long time ago when I didn't like the massage. Shoes, maybe, perhaps? Okay, good. shoes, yeah, bike shoes. Yeah, bike shoes. Cities yeah. could no, never no, get on them. Like Too narrow, big flat feet. Loads of people like cities. Other shoes are available. But yeah, I could never get on with them. It was just me. <laughs> no, fair enough. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going to we're gonna do the news, actually, as well, just quickly. So I have to say, as normal, I've lost my Cervelo. I can't find it in British Cycle and get it back one day, I'm sure, when I find it again. What do you uh, mean in terms of loss? Like like a Premier footballer loses their Mercedes car? <laughs> like, I can't remember where I parked it, so I went and bought another one. That I, just, I can't thing. find it. Where did you Where did you see it last? I saw it last. <laughs> That's the kind of thing I say to the kids. Like, if yeah. you knew that, it wouldn't be lost. Yeah. It's well, not I, a pair I, of pants, is I, it? I stopped using that joke, but then at the podcast, pod, Pod crash pop up at world. Someone said they really liked it, so I'm going to bring it back in there. Mm. <laughs> but it's still lost, so hopefully so it turns you've up. Lost your bicycle? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I've hit the rubbish anyway, so does it matter? Oh, <laughs> controversial. I don't ride a bike, so I don't really know. Yes, you do. I mean, not really like you. I, to be back, to be fair, the, the first d- time you put me on a decent bike, or oh, no wheels, it was wheels. Oh, I put put a set of zips in. Four four forties oh. in, and I and I said, "How do you like the wheels?" And she just shrugged her shoulders and went, oh, "Don't know." They're going round. She, <laughs> she she then fell off because we were going uphill and a car was coming and she ran out of gear and basically forgot to unclip. Oh, and fell oh. over in the road. Nightmare. That was a long time ago. It has to be said. She, Vicky's good on a bike now. Hey, we're we're, we're going to go back into history. Though. We're going to go 
a long time ago on a few topics. I am old, you know, so. Nah, it's just a number. She's old and she's got short legs because the other week I went out with Maddie, our daughter. <laughs> she's 14. <laughs> she borrowed Vicky's bike. Four inches on the saddle height. Yeah. Four inches. Wow. That's all I'm saying. My saddle up four inches for my 13 year old daughter. Well, swimmers have got long backs. Yes, it's true. Yeah, there you go. Long backs she like does, She's got 14 stem. <laughs> 14 um, stem on an extra small frame. It's just, the the purists would, would cringe. <laughs> <laughs> would you put yourself down as a purist? Is that basically just no, a play way of saying you're cringing? No, if the bike fits, <laughs> the bike fits, you know. That's so deep. Well, I, I, I went through, 2008, I went through a bit of a fixie phase. I was riding into Manchester on my fixie and there was a photo taken of me and someone moaned about the fact that it had a long stem on it. Mm. And I said, yeah, because the bike fits me. Uh-huh. It's not, you know, it wasn't one of these put a BMX stem, stem on and look like a whatever. Yeah. My jeans, <laughs> riding, riding up and down the A6 in my jeans. If the bike fits, it fits. That's all it Sorry, but the dog is... <laughs> is oh, that attacking oh, Phil? No. no. <laughs> no I'm getting fix fix attacked. Oh, the, la- say, the last time it did that as well? Last yeah. time Phil, you were here, the dog took a liking to you. She's not, she's not been well this week. We've, we've had Mags four years. She's not been to the vets till this week. She's obviously got a mojo back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting attacked here by the dog. Well, you know, Phil, it's nice to get attention for once. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> Bit of female attention. <laughs> Uh, so we'll continue the news. We've got a little bit of there. Uh, I was at a Garmin event last night. That was wonderful. Found some guests to get on next time. Went to Kids what Hospital. What guests did you find? An ultra runner, marathon oh, nice. runner. Some he, can, other, he can give some you some folk. tips for the marathon then? Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. Well, he said he just like suddenly just started running. He just did a marathon off, off the bat because someone told him to do it. Really? And now he's a professional marathon runner or ultra endurance or something. Yeah. Is there money in it? Apparently. He had a Red Bull hat on, so he must be getting something. Mm. Like, What's his name who just broke the marathon world record? You should know this. Um, do you know his name? I did. No. I, I <laughs> did as well. Is it Kip, Ch- Ch- Kip Choger? Or, no, that's not it. Something like that. Yeah. Are, anyway, you, are you trying to make this podcast informative and topical? Yeah. No, that's not what people come in All right. For. Anyway, and then um, we also had the podcast World Championships we where did, yeah. we were originally going to get the lob on, but we were very tired and wet, so we didn't bother doing it. Can I just say yeah. I did turn up? You did yeah. turn two, up. two hours later, I realised it wasn't going to happen, <laughs> so we just carried on drinking. I said, I said, did you do the podcast? He went, nah, we just got really drunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was towards the end of the event. Yeah, we were a bit tired. So. It turns out hosting events is harder than you think. Yeah. If you do it your did, way. Did you find it quite hard? No, you found it quite hard. You said we'll never do it again. Yeah, I was quite tired. Yeah. But I was also training. I didn't want to push you that yeah. night because to be fair, you looked on the edge, Phil. Really? Yeah. <laughs> was this a night where I just well, went I, home I, early? Well, when, I, when you, you offered a coffee and I said yes and I could see it in your face as if to say, <laughs> I, it, was a, it was just a polite question as we, do you want a coffee? But you're obviously going to say no. <laughs> so I, I wasn't there. That's li- a lie. <laughs> I gave you a lovely bottle of wine. and <laughs> So I wasn't there for the Saturday and Sunday, but I heard you got so stressed that you closed the pop-up at one point. Like you brought in the sign... And just closed it. You were like, that's enough. I'm done. Yeah. I was getting quite tired. <laughs> I was very tired. A bad night's sleep as well in that camper. And you had an argument with someone as well because you had to follow us on social media to get a free coffee. Yeah, the, the issue was that people were asking for free coffee and I said, oh, you need to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And I saw it on his phone. He had Facebook and some other, other social media platform. And he said, no, no, I can't follow you. I haven't got anything. And he was obviously lying to me. So I had to deny him a coffee because I just Too didn't. Right. I yeah. Think, no, I think I think you're kind of missing the point of it a bit. You know, like. No, it's not. It's not a goodwill. No. It's not a soup kitchen, Vicky. It's a. Oh, sorry. If there's I an instruction it manual, whole, it's a commercial know. venture. Oh, oh. Well. Yeah, it's a job. <laughs> if there's an instruction manual and it says do this, do this, do that to get this, that, and the other, and at least be polite about if it. You not don't say no. The rules. I can't do that. We had a tip box. The thing is, though, you don't know who that person was. That person might have been a really influential person in lots of other areas. Well, then I don't want this business yeah, because he wasn't very polite. Oh. Oh. Well, I, I'm not saying he was, like, I, I believe in manners. I think he should be polite. But, you know, do you have to follow you on social media just to get the coffee? Is it not just a bit well, of... No, no, no. You don't, they're in the roles. The then, yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to. We gave... Out, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the dog. <laughs> um, you, you don't have to follow us. 
But if you're polite about it, then of course we'll give you free coffee. Of course. Of course. Of, of course. course. Like we've I'm done glad many we've times. Established that. Of course. It's like yeah. doing a track race and saying, do I have to keep turning left? Yes, it's in the rules. Nice. No respect. No respect. Uh, have you got any news, Phil, before we wind up the news? No, pod crash pop up. Um, yeah, we just went over that. Still training. Um, Callum. Sassy's very busy every day. I'm actually busy. Like you, you showed up to the, uh, did my head in. You showed up to this pod clash pop up and you were like, oh, is this it? And I'm like, yeah, I sorted the camper van, the insurance, the projector, the coffee machine, all that kind of stuff. And you just swanned along and thought it all I've just happened I've asked you many magic. times. Who sorted you the help. location? Me. Because that was like 50 yards from the finish line of the world yeah. championships. Yeah. I just knocked on the door and went, can we have your driveway? Unbelievable. Yeah. And then we got invited to a house party as well. Yeah, we did. That was quite good, actually. Um, so we'll conclude the news there. Yeah, um, that was as successful as it normally is. Um, <laughs> so with Rob and Vicky, so did you? You guys met at the two thousand Olympic Games then? No, no, before that. No, ninety six. Ninety six. In fact, we were we were to get we weren't together. We were at the same Commonwealth Games in ninety four in in Victoria. Oh, did you know of each other then? No, 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 Vicky was. Busy with with other people there, and I was busy <laughs> racing. Really? And then and then we f- we met in Atlanta two mm. years later in ninety six. Yes, and then I um, proposed in the. Uh, how how did you meet out there? What what happened? Well, basically, because you know what they say the, about you know, the village. Look, you know yeah. all the stories about the Olympic Village. Yeah, they're true. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they, Phil? Basically, are they? Phil? I wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't Callum, know. Callum. Are yes, they they're true. Yes, <laughs> they're true. And th- basically, as as bike riders, we we were riding past the pool, and I can remember swinging off. The, there was a big chain fence all the way around the swimming pool to and keep the cyclists out. To keep the cyclists <laughs> out, basically, we did a good job of trying to get ourselves over the fence, but I uh, had to wait a week or two. But that basically just athletes away. <laughs> So Vicky, you're, t- you're <laughs> taking the situation. Oh yeah, no, Vicky. She no, fell I in love met, straight I, away. <laughs> of course, no, she did. Fair, I actually only met you at the opening ceremony. It was the opening ceremony. Yeah, I think we'd been stalking you for for about a week before. Yeah, but I didn't oh. know who you were. Did she not pretend to be like injured or something? I forgot. He did. I, I d- walked I along did. the aisle of the. We were in a baseball stadium, weren't we? Next door. Waiting to go in for the opening ceremony, watching everything on the screen, and and of course the screen, they kept going past, wanting a drink and wanting you know, princess and the peas like they are. Kept wanting to go past, and I stuck my knee out, and she bumped into me, and she knew that I was a cyclist because she'd obviously noticed me in the, in the days previously <laughs> leading up to. No, this. his legs were shaved. Ah, uh, no. was a bit of a giveaway, maybe. Uh, well, well, the swimmers' legs could have been shaved. a swimmer. No, no, no. You so if know. you know anything about swimming, the, all the swimmers will be not shaved before the event. Yeah. Why is that? It's last minute but thing. Then we think shave down. Oh, right. Okay. So that feeling of, you know, gliding it's a bit. It's a bit like the sprinters where you used to train on your on your rubbish heavy wheels yeah. and then put your race wheels. See, we as team pursuers, we wanted full double discs for training because we needed to know what it felt like. Well, that was the excuse. Yeah, that was our excuse. We were too lazy to push the heavy wheels. But it's basically <laughs> it's basically a thing. You know, never never train on your best wheels. Basically, mm. is is one of the sayings. I mean. The, so when Vicky bumped into, you, into your knee, you pretended that she had injured you? Yeah. Corny, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what, how did well, it obviously act? worked, hey, I guess. It definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> was it screaming on the floor in pain? Or no, did you no. Just, no. Oh, oh, I mean, oh, I might have to fly <laughs> home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just a little tap of... He was chipping away at the edge of me, weren't he? Trying to break me down. Slowly, but surely. <laughs> Still, I'm still chipping away. Still chipping away. Does that have a special significance for you, that Olympic Games? Like, more than just the kind of, like, athletic achievement of it as well? Because I, there's not many people who come out of Olympic Games to have, like, a life partner off the back of it as well. I, I guess not. I mean, I, I suppose it, it was it was a big thing because in the, the opening ceremony, we were there, and when they lit the torch, it was, it was McDonald's fries being Atlanta. That was one of the biggest... The biggest memories that I remember. <laughs> you didn't ride very well, did you? If you could see the look, the no, I struggled. Cool. I struggled for a top ten. Yeah, so not we, really we didn't very have, successful. We did, other than meeting Rob, we didn't have successful. we didn't have national lottery funding. That's correct. We didn't. And we then we, when we did, we flourished it's as true. bike riders. As no, swimmers, you you point. floundered, and <laughs> but as bike riders, 
It's true. So pre-funding, that's why when you all came in, we're whinging about your, how difficult your life was. And oh, here you we go again. Okay. Before the days. We only had a single skin suit and we had to sew our own name badges on our suits and all this kind of stuff. It, it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. No, but it was a real struggle. Like finding rent, working, part-time working. So right. you were both semi, well, semi-professional when you both started out then? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've not worked since 92. What was your profession? I was tech service engineer for oh. Gales Brewery in Horndean, which is now defunct. Um, well, obviously they, they missed the Lob Hills. Exactly. But yeah, so I was basically, I was in charge of um, all the dispense equipment from the cellar to the tap. <sighs> sorry, wait, we're almost done. <laughs> 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 yeah, sorry. Some people might be interested. Clearly no one. Some people have never heard that. this before. But yeah, basically I worked for a brewery and uh, helped people get drunk. All right, nice. Vicky, what did you do? The short, 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 short version. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Yeah, to be fair, I never had a job. You never have a job? Never. No. Never had a job till... Um, she, go on, you tell the story. Well, so you, you're essentially like a UK sport athlete before they came along a little bit. Um, I was funded by my parents. Yes. <laughs> bank of dad. Bank of dad. Bank of mum and dad, <clears throat> who literally, you know, had to work to, mm. to make sure... And when I first moved down from Newcastle to Stockport to train at a 50 metre pool, um, just found a, a, a room to rent in, in a house, which wasn't very much, you know, cause I, and then didn't work swimming. It's different being a swimmer to a cyclist. We, we train a lot. You actually can't have a job, I don't think. I, as a it's swimmer. hard to work and train, swim train. Anyway. Um, Wait, you see a lot of them do like, univer- like university and swimming is a big thing, I guess, like. Yeah, up early yeah. in the morning, yeah. late at night, That's, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, it was all it, it was early mornings, late nights. But yeah, when I retired in two thousand and four, um, and went on to do my sports therapy course, um, was was just doing a little bit of swim coaching. Mm. My my good coach, uh, good good coach at Stockport Metro, Sean Kelly, gave me a slip and said, um, "Here you go." And I said, "What's this?" He was like, "Oh my god, how old are you?" I was like, "I'm twenty four. And he went. That is a wage slip, Vicky. <laughs> the remittance <laughs> advice, yeah. Oh, I know what okay. it was. okay. That's a wage slip. Cool. What do I do with this? He was like, oh, again. <laughs> Never been in the real world. Really worrying. And and I hadn't. I didn't have a job till I was 24. So Although I had worked mm. so hard in terms of being an athlete, like really hard. You know, when all my friends were going out and everything, I was getting up in the morning and going you know, before school, swimming and swimming again. So although I'd worked really hard, I'd never had a job why do swimmers get up so early what's what's the reason behind well, it? historically it's partly because of pool time and then partly because swimmers are so very young so if you're going to get four hours in there's only one way that you can do that if you've got a day of college or school in between that and that's getting up in the morning and doing that and I then a the, long rest period between that's something that's quite unusual with the introduction of funding though like how, how did it feel being supported by your family i guess because was there a heightened level of pressure with that or was it quite easy going or you know, because I guess, Rob, if you're doing it for yourself and you're working alongside, then it's, it's I guess, a little bit different than if someone's kind of supporting you through the process, I guess. Yeah, it'd be, di- yeah, it'd be different, I would have thought. Mm. But you, I mean, you'd, you'd be training and you'd, you'd come in from training, wake me up. I'd get up, have my breakfast, go out and do my training, come back, wake Vicky up. <laughs> and <laughs> then kind of we'd had like a <laughs> few hours, literally a few hours together. And then Vicky would go training again. Mm. And so, so she was my alarm clock basically oh, right. oh, fair That's enough. great yeah and um i wanted to talk a little bit so then when vicky when you when you retired you started to take on um a lot of stuff with sports therapy with other cyclists and things like that um so you went along with Flan- to france and stuff with Rob and things like that and worked in that whole setup and things like that but how was that comparison because it seems like you guys have gone through the whole stage of kind of it, with it being completely amateur straight to professional and then straight to pro tour it must have been quite an interesting journey along that whole line i guess so when i mm. retired in t- 2004 when did you no no 2000 2000, 2000 you'd already had your contract signed i signed well i i signed at the end of 2000 so i was in france with cofidis mm. for 2001 two and three and but 2001 you were you were doing your study and weren't you in london yeah for your massage therapy course it was it was a good transition, to be fair, because we'd had funding for a while. We'd had a standard of life that have, uh, enabled us to train 
to just concentrate best. and be athletes. Yeah, to be yeah. athletes. Mm. Yeah, to for the first time to be proper athletes, and and that came that came good for me and for you. We had, we had the benefit of that, didn't we? Mm. And Able then to we get a mortgage and and then that. yeah, but no, I mean in terms of results as well. Yeah. And then we went out, and then Rob went out to France, and then I followed him out there. And I worked with them. Um, I worked with a different. I worked with table tennis for a bit, and then I worked mountain with mountain bikers. biking. So I travelled a lot, and and you could just immediately see the difference that the help gave. It literally mm. was, it was immediate. You know, people just could just do the stuff they needed to do. You could see they weren't drained of worrying about bills, and it's mad to think, isn't it? Because you they never even crosses your mind now or lots of not your you, you in particular but lots of the academy riders don't have to worry about bills mm. you know they're, they've got enough pressure i mean i'm parents. not saying that you're yeah. not saying they can go out and buy f- posh cars and things it's not like that but they've got enough to to have what they need to, yeah. to, to in terms to train i guess i'm aware to an extent because my mum was a fairly good swimmer but then she had to pick between a job or you know, raising a family and all that other kind of stuff as well. Like it wasn't presented as an option, but you know, going back to what we were saying earlier, but like back in the old days, I only had one skin suit and all that kind of stuff. Like what what do you think of the UK sport kind of professional system? Do you think that it's kind of got a little bit easy and people need that kind of time toughing it out or like, no, where do you sit on that? No, it's, it's just better all around. It's better all around. Yeah. And I, I, and I absolutely dread the day that if that ever ends, because it's just so good. It's great for athletes and the results show, don't they? You know, mm. we we have this abundance of athletes who are able to achieve their dream, and what a lucky position they're in. Mm. And the 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 down the downside is, and it would it would definitely happen if there wasn't funding there and there wasn't that, we wouldn't have Olympians, we wouldn't have those yeah. heroes. And it, the, the, I think for the younger guys and girls, they they can't compare how like like for me, I had a foot in both camps. I had that where you got your skin suit at the, on the Friday and you gave it back on the Sunday and, mm. and stuff like that. So I've had that, but then I've also had the fortune of being amongst the UK sport, having the UK but the UK sport bikes, our own kit uh, made, travelling the world with, uh, with with training camps and, and racing and not having to be concerned and just being able to concentrate. So, so the younger guys who haven't had the previous, you, you can't expect them to to be able to have a bit of a perspe- perception of of kind of how good it is. And for me, in, in commentary, it, I have to talk about how it used to be and my own experiences. That's the point of me being there as a co-commentator, but without saying, well, yeah, you know, back in my day, we used to do this and we used to do that, and say, well, it it, it, it makes you tough and, and that. Because I, I can remember Rod Ellingworth, who... He's kind of the the guy. When you look certainly at pro tour level, at the guys that are around now, mm. Tour de France with Geraint Thomas, Cavendish with with the green jersey, world champion on the road, all those guys. What what he did with in the early days of the academy, he was trying to get the guys to be self sufficient, and he didn't make it hard for hard sake. And I think a lot of people probably make that kind of mistaken well yeah but back in our day we used to go out and we used to do six hours in the in the rain in wearing wool and this Mm. and that it's it it's not like that yeah leather chamois and all that kind of thing but that's kind of why i asked the question because you do get that hint of bitterness from a lot of uh, athletes who maybe didn't have the same opportunities that are presented to athletes now a little bit as in like it should be purposefully hard yeah no not 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 at all i think because what basically what you're trying to do with the athletes now is give them a shortcut and that they need to learn themselves. They they need to to be able to be self sufficient because that's one of the things I think. There's this misconception: is you turn pro, whether you whether you're on the national squad um, as an Olympic athlete on the track, or whether you're a pro tour rider on the road, riding Paris Roubaix, Tour de France, that that kind of thing, and everything's done for you. It's mm. not. You've got to be self sufficient. You've got to be self motivated, and 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 that's the thing. And if you take that away from the youngsters then they're stuck and it and it doesn't happen for them. Um, it It's hard, isn't it? Being, being a bike rider, being being an athlete in whatever sport, it, it's tough and it's hard. So you, so you need to learn early on how to take those knocks because that, that's the trouble as an athlete. You have more bad days than good days, I think, for, for most of us. Some seem to get away with it, a few have, more. Do you, Phil, have bad days? I'm not sure Phil has bad yeah, days. I never have many see him, bad days. I never no, you see don't. Him, I never see him being grumpy. He never has a bad day. Well, no, but, the, no but that's, but that's sunshine. because he's a strong man and he copes with it. And yeah. inside, <laughs> he's, he's like the swan, isn't he? 
Yeah, paddling. Yeah. Your feet underneath are going. No, uh, many, many times I've, I'm, I'm coming home, I think, oh, do I still want to do it? Do I, can I still carry on? But then you just get on with it, don't you? You wake up in the morning and then next day you have a better, better session, better track session, and then uh, you just have to carry on, don't you? You just have to accept there's bad days and good days. You, well, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you can't expect to be better every day. And this is one of the issues I have, Strava got a lot to answer for people expect <laughs> to be faster every day every time they go out on their bike i think they expect to do that this section oh well yesterday i did it at this speed and so today i should be quicker and quicker and as you know you you can't do that and you've got to break it down so you've got to expect to have bad yeah. days and but it, it's it's knowing the days especially as an olympic athlete right my my day is it's 240 days away that's the day that for you phil that's the day i've yeah. got to be out of the blocks and it doesn't really matter what happens between now and then, but you've got to work your way to It's that. only really like two two days a year where you've got really good days. Two? Two, two, two days? Yeah, though? two, like As a race spinter, days. I'd say yeah. so, yeah. You just don't race, do you? It's madness. I can't get my See, head why, we why race? did I convert we race, from a sprinter? But <laughs> <laughs> Most you races should have been a, I should have been a kilo Well, I, I very yeah. nearly was that man who did two, two races a year, yeah. basically as a kilo rider. You would have strug struggled to um, squat, me. squat yeah. what Callum and Phil have done. I can't squat, but Phil can. Yeah, but you've still got massive quads. You Thank you. Got there. I Thank used you. to be able to squat 120 kilos to a bench. That's actually my PV. Is it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> See? <laughs> it's a thump on the I table. Oh, no, I remember. Yeah. No, Callum I remember. isn't a very good example. <laughs> yeah. I remember talking to a, a young track and field girl. She was a distance runner, and I told her, and she, she was lifting more than me. She was tiny, but I had long levers, you see. Yeah, but were you fast? It's relevant what you can squat if you're not fast. And exactly. Well, see, like I did Callum try didn't take that. You know, he's not worried about what you could squat, but he was really fast. I was actually quite worried about it for a while, but were you? I got over it, yeah. yeah. It's but a big emphasis on that, isn't it? It is huge. Um, but you kind of had that physiology in your family a little bit because your dad ended up being... Well, he was a, a track sprinter. Yeah, he was a, a track, track sprinter, sprinter and then a pro wrestler and as then, well. Yeah, pro wrestler. So. How cool is yeah, that? It's amazing. Dad, let's just, just stop and have a think about that. That's yeah, so cool, isn't it? It's a pro it? wrestler. <laughs> I've got four graphs. It's no wonder I'm a little bit affected. Killer Kowalski. <laughs> How brilliant is that? You've no, got some amazing. great stories about your dad. Yeah, he wasn't a normal dad. Really? Go on, what, what, well, like a normal dad anyway? Who wants a normal yeah, dad? Yeah, well, well, what's, well, what's normal? Yeah, the other thing, what, what is normal? But I think my dad definitely wasn't wasn't that normal. But track sprinting was his thing, and he he looked like a sprinter on a bike as well. He was, he was a track sprinter. He never owned a road bike because he didn't have back in the day when men were men. And all <laughs> that. I'm still going back to that. What, what year he, are we talking about here? Because your dad uh, was he was um, oh blimey forty, I think nine forty five to fifty six. <laughs> He he raced, and everywhere it was it was when you had your your training wheels were in the bike, and then you had his race wheels with his silk tires, light tires on the tubulars, mm. um, on the what looked like spanners on the off the front fork, and then strap to your handlebars, ride to Hearn Hill because we we were based down in Portsmouth, so we'd ride to all the tracks, um, and race. So you, you could race three three days a week, but he did do a twelve hour. He did it for a bet, and he borrowed a road bike. And he—I've got his medal somewhere. I've got all his his old British cycling medals. Um, and he, yeah, he rode a twelve hour. He said it nearly it nearly killed me, son. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I never rode anything more than a twenty five. I, I did a three up with uh, Chris Newton and Paul Manning. Mm. Um, we did the, the team time trial 50 k, I think. But other than that, it was twenty five miles. That was my limit. Any yeah. more than that, and it, and though that it'll kill your son. They they used to reverberate around me. But the photographs from your dad's. From those black and white photographs we've got, of the, the crowds. It, yeah, like ten a good amount of yeah. being yeah. attached yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Tracks well, well the, the thing is that now you can sit at home and watch the TV. There, there was none of that mm. back then, and the, yeah, the crowds were immense for for track racing. The, the shots of the parking at Hearn Hill, the bikes, and I used to say, "How do you?" I mean, it's like looking at a yeah, train station cars. in Holland. We're not talking about cars, talking about bike parking. Yeah, yeah. yeah bike parking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like superstars back in the days. Like the yeah, well, well, Reg Harris was, was yeah, one of the Reg guys. And, yeah, um, yeah in, incredible. And, and the, I mean, the stories you used to tell me, he had, he had different stories from the wrestling. That's for sure, travelling <laughs> the world. But, um, but it, again, it's just 
just bonkers. Outdoor track racing, though, that comes back to your your track as well up in Edinburgh. And exactly. That's, like, that's what all of the tracks were. So there's a lot yeah. of tracks. God bless so, it soul. So the, a lot of tracks and a, therefore a lot of racing because their outdoor tracks were, you know, available to to get on and for for people to run events. There wasn't just like three or four velodromes. There's loads, and so people could race, and that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, no, for sure. And like you see even photos from like Celtic Park and stuff like that, and it's just packed out with people. It used to be huge. Um, so that, that you had a quite a natural introduction to cycling then, I guess, with well, your dad it, having done it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there is now cycling is pretty funky to do. It's pretty cool, and there are a lot of there are a lot of first generation cyclists now, Olympic champions, first generation cyclists. Whereas back then it was, here, son, he'd take you into a dark room and they mm. kind of open this box mm. that would here. <laughs> this glow out, you're going to be a cyclist and that that was the, nobody it was, it was nobody's first choice to to be a cyclist back mm. then very very rare whereas, whereas now it's it's a pretty cool thing to do just as a quick point no one says funky and cool in the same sentence anymore you should try, not? And try and lean that back in <laughs> okay <Yeah. laughs> i'll um, <laughs> <laughs> it's really and it's really interesting sport to get involved with these days. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's the Dave B answer there. But Vicky, so how did you get? <laughs> so Vicky, how did you get into swimming then? Well, back in the day, it wasn't really funky or cool to be. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, no, I had an older brother who just went to a swimming club. Oh, okay, yeah. So what he did, I wanted to do. So just picked it up and went, went from there. Down. He wasn't very, like, he spent more time on the bottom of the pool, mm. you know, just, like, not, like, being an idiot, you know, yeah, swim yeah, over yeah. the top of him and be, like, pulling faces at the bottom of the pool. <laughs> so it wasn't, it's a really disciplined, really disciplined sport, so it definitely wasn't for him. Mm. He's more of a rugby lad. Yeah, Scott is not disciplined, yeah. is he? Yeah, definitely loved his, <laughs> not in a his physical passion way, I mean. went elsewhere to the rugby after the swimming world, and, but then, if you're good at something, see, so, so you only have to have a bit of praise, don't you, at the age of, like, seven or eight at mm. something. And you get hooked. Yeah. And that's it. you got to find your niche as well. Like, I think it, it, I get a bit torn when people say, like, if you've got a dream and pursue it, you'll be good at it. Because it's like, if, if, if you're not born to be a swimmer, you're like, you're not going to be a swimmer. Like, if you don't have the physiology for it, it doesn't really matter you how hard both, you train. You? you have to have both. You so do. you need to find your niche. You can be a success. You like, if your dream's to be a successful sports person, that's something that everyone can Maybe achieve. Maybe you could have been a swimmer if you would have put all your time into swimming. I'm coming for that Iron Man for you, mate. Yeah. Give yeah. it a go. No, I will, I will. <laughs> I'm going to coach you so that you can swim outdoors. Really? Mm -hmm. Seems a bit treacherous. You get I wet know. and everything. I know. I, know. I don't bit. like getting wet. I'm a fair weather cyclist as well. well you, if you want to do an Iron Man, you're going to have to get wet, mate. That's the, <laughs> that's the first thing that happens. <laughs> No, fair enough. And I'm, I'm going back to something you said about like never going over 25 miles. Like you've had some pretty big successes on the road as well. So like British national champion, all that kind of stuff was, as well. Yeah, it were, it, see, this was a problem I had back in the day. I was a, <laughs> oh, I was a, it's such a big problem. <laughs> I was, I was just, oh. I was just good at everything. I was <laughs> brilliant at bugger all, but oh, I was good at everything. And and yeah, that that was the thing. M my dad's passion was was the sprint. He understood that he got that, and so so that's where I started. The kilo came in, um, and there, but then criteriums and the road, and so I I was I was one of those. I think they would call it these days a hybrid rider. I was a little bit like a, like an Ed Clancy, mm. Kian Amari, that that sort of rider where I had that I had this sprint background, but I. I, I then I saw the light and I went the endurance way. You know, I could saw the light. Like, who wants to sit on a saddle for eight hours a day? <laughs> well, no, no one, not, no one. Not, exactly. not me. But one I that could, wants to get paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, no. The, the thing was, I was a racer. I wasn't a trainer. Mm. So if I had a number on my back, I loved it. And it didn't really matter what it was. And so, obviously, as as the kilo rider that I was and was going to be, ninety four move, moving forward, ninety five, ninety six, that racing you, you can have to race twice a year and that was it as a kilo rider and i had the opportunity to turn pro and and race on the road and 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 play on the bike that that's a thing and that mm. that's that's what took me so so riding the crits riding the road so yeah and so my events were basically anything from the 200 meter time trial up to 270 kilometers mm. so and in between anything in between really so it was What's your two in the meter PB? 
Oh, oh God, this is the Wow. Back in the day, you know, before you lot had suits, big wide forks and a proper bike, uh, about a 10-2. Oh, that's Really? 10-2? That's yeah, 10-2. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I was all right. I was pretty quick. <laughs> How was I was it? a you unit, lie. mate. I was no, a you unit. Lie. No, you're lying. Which track did you do this 10-2 on? They're going to research Probably, it. probably Moscow or somewhere. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what year did you do it short? in? You would have won the words if you did 10-2. Like. Yeah, no, back in the day. Yeah, you would have. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. You would have won the worlds, but yeah, probably it wasn't. Might have been about a ten eight then. (laughs) (laughs) How the memory? No, you're right. Actually, yeah, no, it probably was about a ten eight. I don't know. (laughs) Give me another gin, and I'll think about it. But it's it's interesting you touched on that point about um, being a trainer or a racer because Jason Queeley, who's pretty famous kilo loader. He hated the He was alright in, in his time, wasn't he? He was pretty well, 2000 he was Well, the do you stuff know he what? did was amazing before the funding and all that kind of stuff. Like he kind of blazed yeah. the trail a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, do you know what? I was warming up for the for the semi-finals of the Olympic individual pursuit. I qualified second uh, in Sydney. I'm warming up. He goes and wins the bloody Olympic title, doesn't he? While yeah. I'm trying to warm up. Mm. Didn't crack me at all. Didn't didn't phase me, honest. <laughs> <laughs> I was met. I was with him last week actually, and I keep winding him up about that. <laughs> Thanks, Jace, if you're listening. I know you will be. He, he's a regular listener actually. He always likes in goodwill <laughs> messages. There's no goodwill on this from. Me, <laughs> but uh, so go back to that uh, question a little bit. Like he, so he he liked that idea of just like racing twice a year. Didn't he? Well, wasn't, he liked the training, didn't he? He, he loved, loved the, the training. training. He wasn't a big fan of it. So it's quite a question for both of you. Like, where did you? Obviously, like you were much more of a racer, Vicky. Where did you kind of sit in that spectrum between the training and the racing? So I did love racing. I loved and I loved winning a race. Like mm. it's such a good feeling in it. And that's ultimately, surely that's what you train for. But swimming didn't have that massive opportunity and I was sort of a middle distance swimmer as well 400 meters so I wasn't competing only more than you guys but maybe like five times six times a year mm. and then probably yeah out of that two 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 big two big two big targets oh, okay Just training training Train. training like counting yeah. tiles below but the... I mean I did I did love to race mm but you, you, you kind of say that as a as a given, but then you speak to Kian and Maddy or Queely, and they they would pretty much just happily train forever. Oh man, no way! No, no they would. Like, they would I though. Know, they would. Like, see, see, from an from a, a a track endurance and road point of view, the racing is part of that training, and mm. and you could change that. I would I would change the way I raced depending on where I was in my program. So so although I, I was competing against others. I would race differently depending on what I wanted to get out of it. Whereas I think with with swimming, you just, we talked about this the other day. You maybe just, you just race, don't you? In the fact or that train. But yeah, but some people as well are really good at training. So yeah. their variation oh, yeah. between what they what they the time they train and the time they race mm. not much difference. Yeah. Whereas you definitely literally were a like. Well, that was my down- race, well, yeah. perform. Ultimately, that was my downfall because I couldn't I couldn't compete at the level I would race at during training, which was all right when there were only six of us for a team pursuit because you kind of you, you're assured of your place, mm. and then you know, I'd raise my game with a number on my back. Whereas when you start getting eight guys looking for six places, and, and you know at the end that of is day, kind of Phil's issue yeah. at the moment as well because the internal yeah. competition is so big, and you have to you have to prove your worth in training before yeah. you can get. To I'm the not track. a good trainer. Same for me. You are not no. a good trainer, no. Like, I, I'm proof most of the times, like two tenths on race day, just because of the adrenaline and. I can't tell you how many times we went around the world and like we practiced it time and time again in training, and I would always get on. And then by the time we got to competition, he'd just take off yeah, and never go, see him yeah, again. Go. That'd well, be it. Literally, that's what you want, though, isn't it? But you one of those. Is it though? But you're <laughs> one of those guys <laughs> that goes when training that and racing. Like you don't improve. Like you I don't, don't improve, improve much. much no. No. no, no, no. Well, I used to just pull it out the bag. Mm. most of the time in, in, on race day yeah but we, we've been talking a lot about the kind of intersport rivalry and stuff like that and Vicky some a question which I'm sure you get hit a lot with cyclists is why does swimming have so many events and we've talked about this a bunch of times oh, oh you we no you so don't bring this up I'm going to open the box go on then and just say, I'm well, just that's, that's the question. Her, her why? Her why? Her why? <laughs> no. I'm just going to have a big drink. So I'm going to explain to you non-swimmers out there who, you know, are used to some wheels that go round, never got in the water, don't know how it feels yeah. to have a technically different stroke. So technically, breaststroke to freestyle, completely different. Mm-hmm. Like, so again, so you, I mean, even if you just stuck with your four strokes, right? 
they're technically four different strokes. This is why I can can never get through to people. Like Michael <laughs> Phelps is literally an absolute legend because he can compete in all of those things and win gold medals in all of those things. It's so difficult. So you don't buy the argument that someone says, oh, okay, if Chris Hoy was a swimmer, he'd have as many medals as Michael Phelps. It's not as easy to translate it like that. No. No. Is it like Chris doing the team pursuit it, and all the endurance events? Not... Not even as simple as that because... Because it's, it's in a pool, they're not all the same discipline, basically. Is that what you're trying to say? That's it's not the same sport. I love how you guys are still trying to get to the bottom of the argument. It's like I, I gave, all these years you know are still like settled. I, I gave up halfway through Atlanta Olympics, I think. I just thought, <laughs> you know what, this is, not, this is not going anywhere. Yeah, I kind of liken it to, you know, so if you're, on, if you're a track and field athlete, right, and you've got someone who does a heptathlon and a decathlon, and they've got all those different events, right? But instead of those accumulating into one event, they're all separate, and mm. that's the Phelps. So the Phelps did win the 100 metres. That makes it more clear. Mm. He won the 100 metres, like Usain Bolt. Then he was winning the 1500 and the marathon. That's the difference. So you explain to a track and field athlete, you say, oh, yeah, you haven't got one single athlete that can do all those things. That's the how good Phelps is, or was, because he's retired. But no. that's that's so. If you think about no. it, you're not taking. <laughs> and I've argued so many people. Like, but you, if you're not so may, maybe the competition isn't as it. strong then. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really on the door. <laughs> so let's just go back to the way Phil rides round and round on a wooden velodrome. How many people in the world do that? I'm joking. It's good he doesn't make a I'm fuss joking. about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I want to I want to talk a little bit about you know we talked earlier about the kind of good days and bad days and all that kind of stuff and um, you know I want to pick up on the whole kind of selection issue thing because something in my research uh, I know you said I shouldn't have done research because I know you guys well but I've, I've done a little bit um, was when you were road race champion but you didn't get the call up for Beijing to like the load as well I'm over it are you no <laughs> <laughs> Are you able to kind of talk us through that? Because I guess yeah, that's, well, that, you we, know, and we we're talking earlier about kind of being able to show it and they stay, but not in yeah, training. We, yeah, yeah, we touched on it. Well, that 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 was the issue basically. Mm. Is uh, I think the the fact that there were there were so many. The, obviously, this newer generation of guys who had absolutely no respect for us elders <laughs> came in <laughs> and were just going faster than us. And and that's the thing. As much as I could said, yeah, but I know on the day I'll be as good, if not better. Uh, but, it counts for nothing when you when you spend in the amount of time that we did on the velodrome. Um, you see some athletes that manage to carry that a little bit. So like someone who like springs to mind a little bit is like Cav. Like he almost seems to like Mark Cavendish. He never really seems to like doubt himself at all. He's like I'm Mark Cavendish when I get on the track. No, and not on the face of it anyway. In, yeah, in private maybe a little but bit. But he's always like, no, I'm Mark Cavendish. Well, I'll Brad did the same. Yeah. We 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 Wigo did the same. He he basically was selected pretty much for every event depending on how and that that was an issue that he him and cav had obviously with the with the madison in in beijing um but ultimately i wasn't a cavendish i wasn't a, a brad wiggins mm. i was you know i was i was rob hales and as as good as i was and i felt i was and, and knew i i felt or well, at least i felt i could be when you've got guys putting so much effort in and work their work ethic in the build-up the weeks and months in the build-up and then to all of a sudden be turned around and say yeah but we can't select you overall because because we're pretty sure that he's going to be better on or as good as you on the day it doesn't it, it counts for nothing unfortunately so yeah that that was difficult to have gone through Atlanta Sydney and then Athens and obviously picking up medals along the way a couple of bronzes and a, and a silver and then all of a sudden to see and being involved with the equipment obviously that all came in and then seeing this this jump from from being a medalist to pretty much everyone coming home an Olympic champion, yeah, that was a bit like, oh, blimey. I mean, I still felt part of it, obviously. <laughs> you know, and there's a lot of people with a, a lot of thanks for me and, and the likes of Jason Quigley with with all the medals that everyone came home with. But you know, that's 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 part and parcel of it, unfortunately. And and I'm totally over it, and it's it's not a problem. And uh, and 
the, the drink helps. <laughs> but that's, that's kind of what I meant earlier about talking about, you know, the introduction of funding and all that kind of stuff, because it wasn't just the money coming in there. It was a culture change as well. Massive. Yeah, massive and culture it, and it change. Was, you know, it was like fastest goes and you have to prove your time, prove your worth, and then you go. Whereas in like the olden days, or maybe even with confidence and stuff like that, it was a bit more kind of flamboyant and emotional. And, you know, what you've done in the past actually counts for what you can do in the future. Yeah, yeah. what you've done in the past definitely did. Yeah, and we, we didn't have the strength in depth. Well, there, there were a few, there were a few riders who who were good in their own right obviously you, you had you know you're looking back at Colin Sturgis world champion you had um, uh, Chris Boardman Graham O'Brien those guys who Yvonne McGregor um, who were uh, yeah who who they probably got to their best through being really really savvy and really self-motivated but then you look at the funding that ended up coming in and all of a sudden you had all these riders so so there was there was the likes of myself paul manning uh, chris newton obviously both both coaches now at uh, at manchester um steve coming th- these guys who had been around quite a while and then and then all of a sudden we, we'd come through and shown what we could do but it, it, it took the funding to actually get the best best out of us where the, whereas there were a few prior to that who were you know they were world olympic champions but before the funding um but it, it was it was a massive help in in terms obviously of of us and and hopefully it'll continue for for the younger generations and i guess as like a commentator now and having gone through that whole you know back in the day it was all quite it seems a bit more like flamboyant and emotional and that, all that kind of stuff to know it's the kind of team in your science and maths kind of technique. It's all about well. numbers, isn't it? And yeah, yeah, it's like, and, where, where do you, where do you sit on that as a, as a kind of fan of the sport, I guess? Um, it, it's an interesting one because obviously being on the outside of it now and, and obviously I, I spend most of my time commentating on the road and the, and the world tour and seeing what happened with team sky and Ineos and it's it's not for everyone, and and I, and you can see that as as riders as well. Some go there and flourish, and others they they leave and they breathe a sigh of relief. And and that I think that's the same in 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 a lot of teams. Um, if you you've got to, I think you've got to be able to follow the line, mm. toe the line. Um, and it's a team that if you're in that. If you're in that mindset, you can get the best out of yourself, obviously. But other teams are a little bit more relaxed and, and some riders they flounder there, but but they get the best out. So it's it's not it it's horses for courses. Mm. And that's the thing, it's not for everyone. The British cycling system, so good and so successful for many riders, not for everyone. Mm. And so many riders that don't make it. Um, but generally, it's 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 been good, and 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 it's thanks to you know I, I go around I, I walk around kind of the Giro and the, the Tour de France and see a lot of staff in Team Sky that, that it was and Ineos and think yeah you know you you got there's a lot of people back in Manchester and you've got got a lot of thanks for for those guys for your job basically because mm. that's that's where it all came from but but it, it's not for everyone. Do you think do you think we miss out a little bit on the purists because I can't really imagine a, a green will be or even Colin Sturges or something like that, fitting into the academy set up these days. No, yeah, probably. No. Yeah. I, that, 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 oh, that. I don't know. I don't know. They had to be individual because there wasn't a system for them to fit in. Who's to say that they would have fitted in? Yeah, I maybe. In. Yeah, well, well, it's one of those things we'll, we'll never know. But uh, I, I think the system that we've got is no, no doubt has been so good. Mm-hmm. Not for everyone, and obviously the last few years of British cycling, it, it's raised a few questions, and and people say, yeah, but it's it's too harsh. It's unfortunately, it's it's sport, mm. and it is harsh. It's bloody harsh. Mm. It all it always has been, um, and it's it's been successful, and that's the thing. A lot, a lot of people talk about how teams race. T- teams race on the road. Um, oh, I don't like the way they race. Yeah, but is it successful? Because ultimately. They've got a paymaster to to be mm. asking or answering questions of, and it doesn't matter how they race. Ultimately, from from my point of view, I want to see exciting racing, whether it's on the track, 
whether it's on the road. I don't care. I, I want to come. Again to, and <laughs> I am. It's 10 o'clock on a Friday night, and I'm like, oh, God. Well, Vicky, like, I want to I hear kind of like, so we, we've, we've briefly discussed. Briefly? About what, no, 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 about, <laughs> what, about, what, about what the cyclists think of swimming. Okay. I think it's a fantastic spectacle, yeah, and course, Michael yeah. Phillips yeah, is yeah, a hero yeah. um, of mine. Personal, and um, but I can. But you actually, you, kind of, you slide. I know. <laughs> it's sickening, it. isn't it? Sickening. Um, but I want to talk a little bit because you, you've obviously found yourself. It'd be fair to say far more involved in cycling now than in, in swimming. I'd say in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like what? What? What's? What's the attraction in that? And what's? What's your kind of take on? What's your take on the sport? I guess so you like, and whether it's kind of moving to France or do, you know doing stuff with Cav. I know you guys are quite close and all you, that kind well of thing. You, and you get all the backroom talk, don't you? That's the thing. You're the you're kind of the sounding board for a lot of the athletes, aren't you? Obviously, you can't divulge. But well, that's a really important though for therapy. a sports massage therapist yeah, a lot because you're is, you're sitting there for an hour. It is therapy. Get all the then. gossip. <laughs> it's therapy because you know she comes it, home and doesn't want to talk to me she's like I've had enough of listening to people <laughs> cycling is a, it is just an absolutely fantastic sport isn't it because there's so many variations of it so mountain biking downhill BMX and, and now we have in in Japan we have freestyle so that's new to our program in, in British cycling bloody brilliant crazy mm. when you know and there and it's lush to see them coming in from their their angle let's mm. say and trying to fit into a british cycling expectations it's totally different for them so that's it's really that nice can't be an see. easy transition it's not so. an easy transition but i think um, i think they're managing it you know they've got to they've got to be at you know be at a certain level of they're going to the olympic games that's how it is isn't it you know but yeah, because yeah. you see with extreme sports, it's all like quite huggy, and if anyone does a good trick, then yeah. like you know, snowboarding and together, four cross yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. You know, they, they've just got knocked out of the Olympic it's next like round, but they're high fiving yeah. each other. And it's, it's like, a bit if, like, if, well, if, if one of my competitors did that, I'd be yeah. fucking furious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's a different, it's a definitely a very different vibe of cycling. Mm. So it comes under the cycling umbrella, but totally different. Mm. But it's good to see, and they are they are good athletes. Um, but I want to talk uh, just a little bit, kind of like life after sport, I guess. So, um, Vicky, you kind of gone on to kind of working with a lot of athletes in a in a support setup. You kind of moved on to doing kind of channel swimming and stuff like that as well. Very impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, Rob, it's really hard to do that, you know. Well, I'd love to talk swim about it. Swim across the channel. No, I've heard it. How long did it tough. take you? It's all in the tide. Is it? oh, the, the, tide, the, tide, the tide took her to France. <laughs> It was, just it was bobbed quite, about. It was quite lovey dovey before we got on air. <laughs> it was like, yeah, yeah and, then, and then and then my dad and then show. my mum knew that Rob was the man for me and all this kind of stuff. And, yeah, and now yeah, look yeah. at it. <laughs> so no, I'd love, I'd love to. So what what was the purpose of taking up that that challenge? I think Fergus. I'd had Fergus, so I had Maddie, and then was working, and Rob was busy, and you know, when you've had kids, you kind of don't have any time for yourself. And I'm a bit lazy. I think a lot of athletes are. Do mm. you not think? Unless they've got something to train for. And if all you've done most of your adult life is train for something, and then you don't have anything to Need train to focus. for. Well, it's like Keanu Maddie's finished his Open University degree and now he's just letting that brain lot in his bedroom, basically. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing PlayStation. Just playing PlayStation, PlayStation thing, constantly. Like, he loves the idle life. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. So we need to get on it, Keen, and we maybe need to book him on to another open university one. <laughs> I, g- I give him a lot of rubbish because I'm like, is 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 Glenn Pillings were involved in the fuel system for the Apollo moon missions? His mum went his mum went to Harvard. I'm like, mate, you've got an open university degree. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. I, now come on, let's not judge. Let's no, not open judge. university is a great thing. No, I actually will. expect people that do it themselves and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I'm kind of like, Keen, from an academic point of view, let's <laughs> let's up the game here a little bit. Fortnite's not gonna get you that well, maybe it does get you that far these days anyway. I don't know. It's where the money is where the money is. Big, big money, prizes. big money. Yeah. It's the way forward. Unfortunately, he's terrible at it. But anyway. <laughs> you've got to be a 10-year-old to win them, though. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. No, so yeah, I just thought, right, I need to train for something. So that's what it was. Mm. Oh, and once you've said something out loud, I don't know if you feel like this. So now we've made you say out loud that you're going to go and... Do an Ironman Do an Ironman Man marathon and the marathon. Run the London Marathon. Once you've said it out loud, you've I don't really feel that it. obligation, to be honest. Do you not? No, I not do. especially. I do. Really? Like maybe I'll get a kind of sarcastic text off of you when the event's actually on, but I can deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> so you, like, once the marathon's running, it's a bit late. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should do it. I think like, you should. Think. Well, you Why said not? Why not? Oh, I don't know. Just this. I've tried running. It's just not really for me. Have you properly tried it? When was the last time you ran? I tried it in New Zealand. I thought, you know, let's let's get fit. 
<laughs> it's, as a bike rider, though, I know it's, it's, it's tough. brutal. I I would. I mean, I, I couldn't do the commentary job as I. I mean, I did commentary as a bike rider, but to do it. She look. Vicky thinks I'm going to go on one. <laughs> I just was waiting. Basically, for bike riders don't walk. We we don't walk anywhere. No, so no, let no, alone no. run. That's we're doing not. it for a reason. No, this marathon, like we're doing it because we're going to raise money um, for Ride for Charlie, and we're going to raise when awareness about cry cardiac risk in the young. That's what we're doing it for. Yes, we're not doing it for ourselves. I'm not. Yeah, I'm doing it to keep track of. To That's get what around. Doing it. Yeah, yeah, people say, "Oh, what are you going? What time are you going for?" So, I just want to get around. Oh, yeah. within the week if I can so that's the next challenge so that the channel swim was that challenge and then this is the next one and so uh, and so that's true if I'm not got something to kind of keep me going I'll just end up sitting watching crap on TV on a night time who, who wants to do that Phil Phil no I'm going to run a marathon one day no yeah. no I'm sorry I'm I sorry. will on, Phil. I yeah. will no Trust when, me. when I'm a celebrity's on you are hooked <laughs> to that TV <laughs> Yeah, but I run before that. And then oh, watch like, it. will you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, you, I don't see it. In. I don't see it. Trust me. I, I'd say it now. I guarantee you I'll run the marathon Good for in you. four right. hours. Well, fair enough. I, I like your... Do you think by the time you get round to running, you'll be able to wear glasses with a head-up display so you could do both? <laughs> 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 I'm a celebrity in one corner. <laughs> um, what, did, what did you make of the... We saw quite recently uh, someone swam the tunnel three times. Four times. Four times. Oh, back and forth. Yeah, back and forth. In one go. Yeah. Against the tide, so without Rob's handicap, which he talked about earlier. Now you timed them. I'll just tell you a little story <laughs> yeah. about when I was training for the channel, going back to like Rob and his, so a friend of mine. Helpful said, ways. Helpful, super helpful. So <laughs> I said, Rob, I need to go and do a really cold swim and it, and it needs to be six hours long, <laughs> at least, right? Half yeah. the time. So we went up to the Lake District. A friend came with a blowy up canoe from Decathlon, other are available and um, we got in in the morning and my friend she she paddled up down water like freezing cold she was paddling away i was swimming into the wind into headwind she worked really hard in this stupid canoe getting me all the way at one end rob's turn to come back the other way so i'm three and a half hours up the reservoir she swapped with rob rob gets in tailwind bobbing along all i could see i was, pad- like, I was actually <laughs> paddling backwards more than forwards because the wind <laughs> was just taking big flat feet bobbing out the sides of this pipe and he was like can you hurry up a bit? I'm really cold and I really need the Louvre. Can you, can you not just like speed it up a little bit? Can of so, beer in hand as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's the help, how helpful he is. Oh, that's good. So it's fortunate I, I wasn't on the fishing boat during the day. I was... You were at Worlds. I was at, yeah, I was at the Worlds uh, in Copenhagen. Right? Yeah, because it's quite specific the days that you can do it for the tides yep. and stuff. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so this lady has done it four ways. Absolute utter respect because imagine... Just the tiredness alone, not just the mm. fact that you've got to physically keep swimming. What Imagine do you think that, about? Phil? What do you think Imagine about? Imagine Phil just, just staying awake for that long, fifty odd hours or whatever it was. Oh, I couldn't do it. Imagine. That. What do you think about the guy that uh, swam around Britain, Ross Edgley? Yeah, another his mentor as well. Yeah, he saw like his feet, like just yeah. bits of his feet falling yeah. off, like like yeah. skin the and salt. Stuff. Do you? Oh, the salt's yeah. not ideal for you, is it? No. I heard it's quite Everyone therapeutic finds in small their own little challenges to do, and then some people just literally go another There's level. something in them that, that pushes them to, to take it to extremes though, I think, a lot of the time. I don't know, but you know, maybe it's not enough to win an Olympic gold medal anymore. Well, maybe. for some <laughs> of us, it wasn't enough. <laughs> no. maybe, <laughs> it, you know, maybe that's not enough in this life. Maybe you've yeah, got so to The people start, like, run like 100 miles in, in, a, in 24 hours or something like this. Yeah, um, ultra marathon running. Yeah. Oh, it just makes Stopping me feel... Stopping on the way to breastfeed their kids and just carrying on like super, super human. Oh. We need to get an ultra marathon guy on because I, I just I just can't get my head around it. Like why? Just go as fast as you can for ten seconds. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the best All way. Out. And you yeah. do go very fast for those ten seconds, don't Thank you? Thank you, Vicky. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank and then you. people say, why why train so much for these ten seconds? Like why would you put yourself through it? I think what, what we're coming to the conclusion is we all have our own things going on and we all choose what we nah, want to do. Nah, we need to pick a side of the fence. That's not how this podcast works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you don't have an opinion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I have an opinion. Yeah, you got to have an opinion on this podcast. Um, so I kind of want to like start to wind it up a little bit, but I, one of the points that I thought was quite interesting in terms of like life after sport and all that kind of stuff is... Um, obviously, you both got two kids and stuff like that. Does does it ever become slightly interesting when pe- when you mention that you're both multiple Olympians? I guess like we do, don't mention it. You, no, I, not, I don't mention it either no, no, in public actually, as well. Like I don't think many people know. Do they not? No. Really? Really? I rock up to the kids' football sessions and cricket sessions. I don't think anyone. Because sit on the side of the pole and and our kids don't, don't swim. <laughs> well, no, but when sorry, okay, when you when when the kids did swim. 
Breaking news, Rob. When was the last time you took either of them to a swimming lesson? <laughs> First time I was left was with Matt, right? first, first, first time I was left with with Maddie. She's now, is she thirteen or fourteen now. Oh, anyway, she's nineteen. We, we, we're talking like a good. This was this would have been a good 12, 13, 12, 11 years ago, <laughs> something like that. And Vicky, everything was laid out, and we had to go swimming to Buxton. By the time I'd managed to get her out of the house, even though Vicky had sorted everything, we got there, and they said we're closing in ten minutes, mate. <laughs> and she looked at me. She she knew. She looked at me, and I said, "Let's go and feed the ducks." And we go on the training. But I felt so bad. Mm. That's so. Yeah, no, they don't. And they don't like they didn't swim either. from early day. We went to the Tour de France. They hated it. Oh my god! Honestly, <laughs> really? I, we spent a fortune, got all the way down France. You know, did these amazing things, and it was G was in yellow, and it was the first um, staggered start for the Tour de France. I was so excited, mm. and it was hot day. I turned around, I'm like, "Come on, kids, it's a start! Yay!" And they had a towel over their heads, <laughs> sat by the side of the road, so hot. And they looked at me and they went, Mum, we don't even like cycling. Ooh, I know. Does that hurt? <laughs> and I went, that's okay, that's yeah, okay. No, it's fine because it's cheap. We don't have to buy them bikes. <laughs> but then they, they do have bikes. Just take them they to the do pool, have bikes, yeah? by the way. They did enjoy the following day when G was in the time trial. Mm. And he was in yellow and it was going to be the G win. Now, that was slightly different, but it is really difficult for children to understand yeah. road racing. Mm. It's boring, isn't it? If you just stood at the side I of the road, yeah. I get that. If you don't know the moving parts. But yeah, I, I think a lot of people, a lot of parents who, who do know that they, they expect them to be really good at sport. Mm. No, they're, they're extremely good at sport, obviously. But, mm. um, but uh, yeah, they're, they're expected to be like that. And it's like, well, hold on a minute. Just, just because you might be academically very good doesn't necessarily mean that your kids are going to be. You know, Kian's yeah. obviously a great, great <laughs> ambassador for that theory. Yep. But, yeah, <laughs> yes. no, but no, I think there's a lot of, I think there's probably a bit of pressure or expectation on them to be, well, they're, well, they're bound to be good at sport. If well, because there was a big hype about Laurel and Jason Kenny having a kid and stuff and about being the genetically Future, perfect yeah. cyclist. Yes. Right. But we know it's probably not just about that, though, don't won't we? Even no, we know, but, but we it's, know. it's funny yeah. how people get themselves whipped up about it, yeah, which yeah. probably harks back to why you guys don't really talk about it, I guess. Like, most Olympians, I find, are actually quite humble about it. They don't go, well, some do, but most, apart from Phil, doesn't go up to bars trying to get free drinks and all this no, kind of stuff. Of course, a long time just ago. Just a free car. Yeah. <laughs> He let me drive the car on the way here, yeah. so it felt especially special. Callum had a few free cars as well. He's curved your wheels, you know, outside. Just, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'll do anything for a few quid. Um, <laughs> uh, no, the kids will be fine. Like, I just always say, look, I want them to love sport, stay doing sport till, you know. They do you know, love sport, to be fair. And just, just, just <laughs> all those hours by the poolside. Enjoy what they're all doing. Those, yeah. So that's how it happens, isn't it? No? Yeah. yeah. Did Football, your parents rugby, have netball, expectations cricket. of you? Uh, no, no, like my mum was uh, almost like... They gave up expectations a long time ago, didn't they? <laughs> no, she, she kind of let me be kind of independent, I guess. It was never, you know, she she almost to the point where like she wouldn't drive me to the track. She wanted to see how, me, how I could get there myself and all that kind of stuff. It was about doing it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's about enabling you to be a grown-up and... So yeah. what, do you, what do you think when you see parents going nuts at the side of football oh, pitches and so stuff? There's, there's a whole new oh. podcast about this, Callum, and we need to discuss this. Oh, is it? Yeah, really? it's a it destroys me. There's a Does massive... So, so I guess but having your perspective gives you a new take on that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Because you know that's not what leads success. As even, well. like, even supportive girlfriends, I, like, I couldn't do with it. Imagine like your girlfriend going mental on the side of the... Side of the yeah, but stands. it happens, doesn't mm, it? Yeah. It happens in relationships. There's it, a lot of high profile... I couldn't deal with it. It's, I it mean, I've, I've, yeah, I've seen it over the years with bike riders where the, the parents are basically living their kind of their ambitions that, that never fulfilled as, as they were bike riders, mm. a lot of them, through their kids. And you can see that a lot with football, especially because both, both Maddie and Fergus, they play football, uh, they play. Play, uh, Which Vicky, you were a bit well. upset about, if I remember correctly. No, I still am. It, <laughs> yeah, well, it, <laughs> let's be honest. But it, no, it's on it. Rugby, and f I'm sure I upset a few people. But hey, that's that's by the by. But the, <laughs> yeah, so the, out, the, the it's so different. The outlook at, at rugby, there, there's so much respect. Whereas with football, it's just it's just it's different. Let's just say mm. that. And it, it's pretty brutal. Mm. The, the sport in and. Just see the the chat on the side of the pitch, not let alone what's but on. But you the know, pitch. like not. Let's just talk about cycling for a f 
for, for a bit about that expectations of of there's a, there's a lot creeping into that now and mm. you said say a little cross race for instance so you've got these kids like going around these little cross races parents literally screaming at them mm. screaming yeah. at these children and their children like me if there's one bit well, of advice is step back let them have fun let them have fun yeah. because if you continue to scream at them they won't be doing it when they're 15 well, mm. well how, yeah i mean how often would you guys get asked about what training should my should my 11 year old be doing my 10 year old be doing what i tell them it doesn't matter no just yeah. ride just enjoy you need ride. to find the passion for the sport and Absolutely. that will carry you through the good days exactly. and the even we've seen some pushy parents really in our time on the program. Oh, for sure. I, like, you know, parents sleeping in academy accommodation and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Like, it, it, it's... It's do, it's not right, well, yeah. Do well, you, do you think that is because now that there's so much success in the UK that there's this visual... There's a pathway where people... It's really tangible now, whereas... Never used to be. Olympics, World, World Tour, Tour de France, Olympic podium, World podium even, was something that other riders did from other nations well it's like we're talking about that transition it's like you know you were saying when you took up cycling it was like this golden box and then here's this yeah, magical cycling thing just, and all this kind of stuff yeah. and but now i guess you know maybe it's got a little bit of that football aspect it's cycling's yeah. associated there's with success career. there's and a there's potential a yeah, yeah, there's, there's a potential, potential pot of gold at the end of it quite literally for, you get a for pro some. contract you can be a multimillionaire. you can be but it's it's, it's not it's pretty as simple hard, as that yeah, yeah no i know but but if you have a child who's winning a race at 10 like do the parents automatically assume that that process is going to be continue you know, and continue? Well, one achievable mm. and a necessary sort of like sort of yellow brick road to it. You know. Do you ever do you ever intervene at the sidelines, or do you just let it just let it happen? Yeah, right. Intervene, of course, I intervene. Really? You know, do you? Yeah, what do you do. say? Shut up. <laughs> What do the parents get say? over yourself? They, they're a bit. I I've been known to t- to li- literally speak my mind. It's funny that. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I can't help. I can't. You like you can't stand by and listen to a parent. One having no respect for the referee, mm. and then two having to go the the person who's given up their free time normally because let's face it, all of these things function on volunteers giving up their free time and they're having a go at them mm. and then they're like berating their child for like missing a goal or they're shouting at them, shoot, 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 do it now, shoot. Imagine the pressure. Mm. Like, yeah. You know, like let them enjoy their sport, whatever whatever sport it is, let them enjoy it and, and uh, hopefully if you're lucky, your kids will still be doing it into their adulthood which is ultimately the dream, isn't it? I guess it's Not what the they ultimately want but they just don't know how counterproductive yeah. it is, do they? It's, mm. it's but there's funny... another podcast there Talk about that. Talk about the, pa- the helicopter pushy, parents. Pushy parents. Uh, yeah. Or the lawnmower ones. The ones that literally just like plow over the top of them. Lawnmower <laughs> parents. Over, yeah, What's lawnmower that? parents. I've not heard that term before. Yeah. There's really? Some, yeah, because there's plenty of them as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm not sounding like I know it all, but when you have when you have seen as much as sport as I have, mm. then surely it's right that you sort of share it a bit. Don't you? Yeah. That's the right thing to do, isn't yeah. it? I feel like there's the odd exception though, because some people say, you know, like the Venus sisters yeah, and stuff is, like that. There is. And but then you look- some people like to presume about Andy Murray and that kind of thing as well. That yeah, but that comes down to the individual, I think, then as well, how strong will they are and how much they do want it. Because if if the parent wants it more than the child, I think that's where there's there's mm. trouble. But if it, it's all very well, the parents wanting it. As long as the child does, and it's nurtured in in the right way. In a case, sometimes it. It, it doesn't but again if if the kid's that strong will to actually push through mm. then the chances are they're going to be pretty good aren't they no i'm like talk, my dad coached me in swimming which obviously can lead to like you know with a teenage girl issues yeah you can, that can be a yeah. fractious relationship but mm. he but was for always, your whole career or? no no for about four years okay um yeah but um he like and he, he was always a facilitator for my dream mm. like he would get up in the morning, go to the pool, pull, pull the pool covers off, coach the session, go to work, come back, do the same on the evening. He, he was he was just facilitate, facilitating what I wanted to do, like that, and that's what your parents do, isn't it? Mm. You know, you take them to the training, they do the training the best they can. You get in the car, say how was it? You know, don't get involved. Let the coaches do the job, and that's the same. Like you would be mortified if you had a wife. Or a parent who would come down to the track and start having a go at the coach, wouldn't you? Surely. Yeah. You, no. You, yeah. 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 That's it's cringy. 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 If anything else, that's that's the main point. It's, it's like saying it's like saying funky cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> keep it funky, guys. Anyway, um, so if we could to kind of just kind of wrap this up a little bit. So obviously we heard about the the marathon that you guys are doing later on. But um, like Rob or Vicky, have you got anything else in the pipeline? Let's talk quickly about. Or um, have you got an extra story? Rob's businesses. 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 Business. Businesses. 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 Well, yeah, again, again, a little bit like my cycling career. I'm, I wasn't very one-dimensional as a bike rider, and I do lots of different things now, you see. So one minute I'll be I'll be talking to literally tens of people commentating. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next minute I'll be on my own in the workshop. Mostly here are dozing in the chair on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. <Exactly. laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, 100-odd days, 110 days a year or so, I'm away commentating mainly world food English commentary to to those who who require it so I go all over the place uh, on the finish line of, of races and then I've got a workshop here when I'm at home and it's um carbon repairs well that's how it started carbon repairs on bikes and wheels used to do all the GB stuff all the uh the bits that you lot used to break um did you ever break a bike oh tons yeah just lose must it. have done yeah did you Strong yeah, lads, strong the, lads uh, the bikes before a certain Olympics broke quite a lot. Uh, I, d- I don't think they repaired them. To no, they put them in the bin. Yeah. I, feel, <laughs> um, I think yeah. by all account they were unrepaired. Yeah, a little bit like a lot of private bikes, they're unrepairable, some of those. Yeah, they're, yeah shocking. Anyway, swiftly moving on. <laughs> other, other, other manufacturers are available. Um, we, I don't think we, we didn't most, most the of those. Are, yeah. He specifically didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll be a few people who will know. Um, <laughs> And then yeah, and then um, we we're starting to do a little bit of uh, track days and a um, bit of kind of experience days mm. with myself and Vicky doing various. That's very very new, very early. In fact, am I allowed to mention this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it's a good job I have then. That's, um, what, what, that's what my research day was about today. Oh yeah, vi- oh. yeah, what, yeah. What, what are you doing? First time I've heard about it. Been to no, it's not. We were talking about spa. it at dinner. I've been to a spa. <laughs> I've been to a spa today. Oh. You know, and I said I'm not a spa girl. Definitely never. No, I was. I was playing with Margaret there. <laughs> 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 Phil doesn't. Oh, Phil, was she playing with no, you? Phil? You have to learn about Phil. He doesn't listen unless you say something like handsome, attractive, <laughs> intelligent, and then he suddenly wakes up and goes, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I was, Literally yeah. like a dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was back in the kitchen stroking Margaret. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> So yeah, so 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 Vicky's been out doing um, yeah a bit of research, having a having well in the pool and whatever <laughs> and whatever. So it's more, whatever it's, yeah, it's, look, it's, like it's, it's more well, looking for the venue. Yeah, it's, good, yeah, it's, good. it's, it's more yeah, for it's the venue. Um, yeah. um, so there's that, and then there's um, I yeah. don't think anyone actually knows what that is. You just went and it's that. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about re- researching a spa day and. Doing whatever you do Looking in the water. For a venue for I think it was meant to be UK's like triathlon holidays. Yeah, was, the, was the main selling point. Riding, <laughs> yeah, anything like that. It's sorry, I thought I thought I'd explained earlier. Obviously not. Just, sorry, the dog. This is what I live with. <laughs> so, yeah. so so sign up to that whenever you want. <laughs> Spotty. It's a spa day and whatever you do in the water. <laughs> Ooh. Funny. Well, there's that, <laughs> whatever that is, oh and God. then and then carbon concepts, which I've I've kind of the the carbon repairs <coughs> has evolved into doing jewelry and mainly rings, mm. and from from my engineering background because I I did study <laughs> when I did have a job back in the early nineties, I did uh, did did engineering. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Because we have been over this bit. (laughs) We have talked about that. That was hours ago. I can't do any more. Can we just? Yeah, no, no, that's right. We were winding it up. So anyway, I'm doing I'm doing stuff with that as well. To be fair, to be fair, now I have more respect for you in your daily job. What? You didn't have have it. It's only taken (laughs) twenty odd years. Because we've talked for a bit, and I'm already exhausted. (laughs) Imagine doing another. Five hours of this. Imagine. With just two of us. There's and four no of gin. us here. And no gin. Yeah, no gin. Well, mm. well, we'll wind up the yeah, podcast then. Up. <laughs> anyway, so thanks a lot for coming on. And um, just a quick point. It was nice for Rob Hatch to mention the podcast on uh, his commentary job. Was didn't that a dig that Rob didn't mention the podcast? I was about like I say, I was doing World Feed. I was, I was talking to people abroad. They, I mean, it would have just been totally over their heads. I mean, we have an international totally following. Have have some international followers. I mean, talking about 10 hours and nothing to see. <clears throat> I know exactly. Yeah. 
I'm going to mention it all the time now to all my friends. Thank you, Vicky. Good. You're Thank welcome. you. Thanks. Thank you. Very much appreciated. You're such a oh. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we always say to our, um, our guests if they want to um, promote the social media channels or any businesses and anything like that, yeah. that now's the time to shout them out, basically, apart from and that. Oh, yeah, and that spa thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing to do with spas. Now we're all good. We'll get there to, with our little businesses. Now it's good. been a lush night. And uh, follow Rob on Instagram if you want to see some late night dancing in his Instagram. I, well, yeah, I've got to do a Friday night. What's the time now? Oh, blimey. I've nearly missed my uh, curfew for normally about 10 o'clock. I stick one out and it's. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Who's editing this? No one is Phil, you've got a lot of editing to do later. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's all going in uncut. <laughs> so, as we said, follow <laughs> follow the pails and you can watch them stick one out <laughs> every Friday about 10 o'clock. Oh <laughs> right. Okay, so thanks for tuning in. Um, and we'll have some guests on next week. So we're going to go back to weekly podcasts after we did the uh, Podclash World Special. So, um, as always, tweet us with any thoughts or comments and things like that. And we'll be back next week. So, right, thank you very much to Please Rob and Vicky for coming on. Please don't tweet me or Rob on any comments. <laughs> <laughs>